you could imagine since the poor education and the poverty issue and the very limited space for the community itself make the whole community is lacking the media literacy. That's why they cannot differentiate which media is reliable and good enough, which one is balanced and investigated, which one is analytical. They cannot differentiate. They can just consume for the popular issues. So since the media literacy is quite low, the mainstream, more balanced media cannot survive very well. And the media infrastructure is also limited. You know, the whole media distribution network has been monopolized by the government. We cannot send our print medias with very low cost to the rural area. And also for the broadcasting channel, since there is limited electricity, etc., it's still very hard for us to reach out the people who lives far away. Uh, well, you know, some uh, journalists are accused by the violating the National Secret Act. It's it, these altogether four journalists and the one editor, they have been publishing uh, news stories about uh, suspected military warehouse or the su suspected military weapons factory. So in that case, I think the key problem is not only about violating the, uh, uh, not only about violating the existing laws, it's, it's not intentionally violating the existence. No, I, I, as far as I understand, they just want to elaborate about the land confiscation problems in this area, and then they found out that this, this factory, it's, it's, it's not uh, like a normal warehouse or the factory. So they just want to make an investigative reporting on it, but with their limited skills, it's time for us to be violating the National Secret Act. But I think this in their intention and the way they write is it's a little bit uh, get. Oh, sure. There are a lot of corruptions going on on inside the country, but none of the media or the reporters can truly investigate it and do this kind of cases because of the so many existing law and the government officials are not very supportive for sharing the data, etc. So, so many things are still never being disclosed. Well, you know, I still owe 14 years, six months imprisonment, and not only me, anyone from Burma, any citizens of Burma can be in prison anytime for, without any reason. For example, like recently, the Minister of the Ministry of Religion has been arrested. So the risk is not only for me, but also for everyone here in Burma. Here, what we are facing right now is censorship issue has been a little bit outdated for us. Self censorship by the media ownership is now coming up issue, and the limited infrastructure it's also prevent to expand the market. And another one right now is during the while a lot of reporters has been attacked by the the rioters. They try not to have <coughs> taken photograph and they have been sending some threatening messages to the reporters not to write about this, etc. etc. So 
the whole uh, scenario has been changed. And for these kind of the, the uh, to prevent these kind of the all obstacle, I think the most responsible one is the government. Okay, yeah, I do agree. The problem of the, the people of our generation and the coming up generation is the key difference is knowing about the past. Because of the censorship and the darkness of the history, the coming up generation, they don't know about what's, what's going on in the past. That's why for them, it's really hard. And we have been living in the virtual situation for uh, so long. Even though we live in the real world, it's like a virtual world for us because we don't know what's going on in other part of the, the country. So it's, it's very important to learn about the past. It's very important for us to proceed for the future. 